miracle in life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim. There are approximately 42 orders, 431 families, and 24,000 species of rayfin fish today. They make up 96% of all fish species. This makes the rayfin fish the dominant aquatic vertebrates in our waters today, and they make up 50% of all vertebrate species known. Where did they come from? The oldest rayfin fish on record is dated back to the Devonian period, which was about 400 million years ago. It has been found that Actinopterygii were dominated by the Carboniferous period, which was 360 million years ago, and began to move from fresh water to salt water. Actinopterygii, or rayfin fish, and Sarcopterygii, known as lobefin fish, are the two known lineages of bony fishes. Rayfin fish evolved to better survive in a wider range of aquatic environments, whereas the lobe-finned fish evolved to form today's tetrapods. Uh, wow! Mammals! Let's go! <laughs> there is such a large number of species of rayfin fish that they are dispersed among a wide range of living conditions. This includes varying temperature, pH, salinity, depth, and oxygen saturation. Rayfin fish have unique dermal fin rays, which are webs of skin supported by bony spines. These fin rays are attached to the internal skeleton. The fins increase swimming efficiency for the fish, which increases their chance of survival. A swim bladder is a sac containing gas that allows the fish to adjust their buoyancy. In early Actinopterygii, it most likely served as a primitive lung, but it is now almost entirely used for buoyancy. This allowed the fins to evolve into devices for better maneuverability. Ancient Actinopterygii had heavy and unflexible ganoid scales, which are still seen in some primitive fish today. Actinopterygii today have evolved leptoid scales, which are arranged to overlap to decrease water resistance. These scales are much lighter and more flexible, allowing advanced maneuverability. There are two types of leptoid scales, cycloid and tenoid. No eating here tonight! Woo! Eating, eating here, here tonight. tonight! No, no, no eating here tonight! Do You're it. on a diet! The structure of the jaw includes two major bones, the premaxilla, the upper jaw, and the maxilla, the lower one. The jaws of raven fish have proved to be very adaptable over the millennia. They were previously firmly attached to the skull, while now the upper jaw is not attached and can easily be protruded. This increases their variety of feeding options. Actinopterygii have homocircle tail fins, which means they are symmetrical. This is because they have neutral buoyancy and it allows the fish to have more precise movements. And finally, their periculum is a flexible bony plate that covers the gills and allows the fish to breathe without moving. And here are some Actinopterygii you may know. Lophiaformes, also known as anglerfish. The most commonly known trait is the female's dorsal spine that protrudes above their mouths which have a luminous tip to attract their prey. Their mouths are so big they can swallow prey that is twice their own size. The Pteroist volatans, or lionfish, have stripes of red, black, and white that it uses for camouflage, large pectoral fins that are used for herding its prey into a confined space, and venomous spiky fin rays to protect itself from predators. Exocytidae, or flying fish, have large pectoral fins which enable them to jump out of the water. This allows them to glide for some distance above the surface to escape from predators. And that concludes our video about Actinopterygii. Bubbles! 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 Bubb